Well, Longhorn Cavern State Park is one of the most unique places in the state of Texas. And we say that for really two reasons. Number one, our unique geology. We are largely a river formed cavern. And second, because of the unique human history that happened here, we have a vast collection of Texas sized stories that took place right here in the cavern. In 1934, we got a group of CCC, Civilian Conservation Corps workers. The CCC was a Depression era program created by Franklin Roosevelt to put young men to work around the country during the Great Depression. These guys showed up and with wheelbarrows, pickaxes, shovels, they manually excavated over 3,000 dump trucks worth of debris from inside Longhorn Cavern. They laid our first pathways, they built the original buildings for the park, so these guys really made the park what it is today, and we're gonna look at some of their legacy as we go on tour today. The Queen's Throne is one of the more famous features of Longhorn Cavern. This was the cavern's original selfie spot, if you will. Guys would bring their dates over to the Queen's Throne Room here, set her up on the throne and take her photograph. You can tell it's got a bit of damage to it. Um, it's a little dull, some things have been broken off for souvenirs. They just didn't understand back then the importance of protecting these types of cave ecosystems. So we use it now as a really good example of why cave conservation is so important. The Queen's Watchdog. This formation actually is completely natural. Our CCC crew found this formation in the back of the cave. It is made of something called dolomite, which is a denser form of limestone. It has magnesium in it, so it erodes much differently than traditional limestone. The CCC thought it would be fun to bring this formation up here, affix it to the boulder, and they named it the Queen's Watchdog because it now looks after the Queen's throne. The bats we have in Longhorn Cavern are called tricolored bats. Uh, they are one of the smallest bat species in North America. They're also one of the longest hibernating bats in North America, which is lucky for us because it means they're in the cavern and visible most of the year. Um, they are fully grown about the size of a chicken nugget, so we actually call them the chicken nuggets of the cave. Well, this is the Indian Council Room. It is one of the largest chambers in Longhorn Cavern and it's called the Indian Council Room because they found evidence of Native American occupation of the cavern uh, in this room. And the reason we know that the Native Americans were using this room is because of this rock you see along the top here, this brown layer of rock, that is called chert. And chert is a flint type rock that Native Americans would use for creating uh, projectiles, different kinds of stone tools, much like you see in the case we have here. This particular projectile was found in this room by one of our guides a, a few years ago, and we were able to rescue it and put it on display here for people to see. This room is called the Hall of Diamonds. It's one of the most popular rooms on the tour. CCC called it the Hall of Diamonds because, well, the crystals that are surrounding us right now reminded them a lot of diamonds. And these are actually what are called calcite crystals. Calcite crystals uh, look beautiful, um, they're not worth anything. If you think about a diamond being the hardest mineral substance, a calcite crystal uh, is actually pretty soft, pretty scratchable um, and, and flaky. It's not really worth anything. However, from a Longhorn Cavern perspective, at the time the cave was being developed back in the 30s, this was really one of the largest collections of calcite crystal then known uh, in the world. Um, it is unique in its light properties as well. If you take a flashlight and you put it up against some of our calcite here, you can actually see it glowing from the inside. Calcite has a very uh, interesting way of refracting light. For a long time, this room was called the Hall of Gems, and it was called that because back in the day, they installed colored lights in this room to try to take advantage of those light properties of the calcite crystals. Now today we prefer the Hall of Diamonds, the historic name and the stories behind it, but we did leave a run of colored lights in this room so that we can give people that came here years ago the sense of being back in that Hall of Gems again. So you can see as I turn on the colored lights, we've got red, green, blue reflecting against the surfaces of those crystals and it's, a, it's quite a beautiful room, whichever way you like to look at it. All right, well, we've reached one of the main destinations on our journey today. We call it the Hall of Marble. Now, what you're looking at here is that same rock called dolomite that we talked about with the Queen's Watchdog. It's limestone plus magnesium. It erodes much differently, so it gives this room that sculpted appearance. You can see how the water whirlpooled against the ceiling, creating all of these domes or scooping scallops out of the sides of the walls. 
What you're looking at here is the result of very high, very fast flowing water. So we call this room the gunpowder room. We call it that because of these large brown stains that you see up on the ceiling. Those stains were left here by a colony of Mexican free-tailed bats. The bats we have in the cave today are the tricolored bats. They live alone. Mexican free-tails live in very tight colonies of three to 500 bats per square foot. So if I have three to 500 bats per square foot over my head right now, what do I have down here? Bat guano, lots and lots of bat guano. Back in the 1860s, we had something going on back east called the Civil War. Somebody a lot smarter than me figured out you can take potassium nitrate, sulfur and charcoal, put it all together and make gunpowder. Well, bat guano is a prime source of potassium nitrate. So all of a sudden, every cave in Texas is being mined for bat guano to make gunpowder. These were placed here in 1967 by the Office of Civil Defense. Longhorn Cavern became a licensed and stocked nuclear fallout shelter for almost 1,200 Texans. In the event the Russians decided to launch a nuclear missile at Central Texas, we could bring those people down here. These barrels were full, full of food. They could be used for storing water and also as toilets. And we hope in that order. I love the stories. Everything from the Civil War era to the Native Americans, um, just the early explorations. It, it's all just fascinating history. Now in 1932 in January, Carlsbad Caverns got their first elevator. By July of 32, almost half the visitation to Carlsbad Caverns was coming from Texas. Well, keep in mind, it's the Great Depression. We want to keep Texas dollars here in Texas. So what can we do at Longhorn Cavern to get people coming here instead of going over to Carlsbad? Well, it is Texas after all, so we can come down into this room and put in a 2,000 square foot wooden dance floor. We can bring in restaurant tables. We can lower food and drink through a hole in the ceiling. We can have live entertainment on the stage here behind me. And you can dine and dance in the world's only subterranean ballroom. So from 1932 to 1934, if you had come to Longhorn Cavern, it would have sounded something like this. If you're looking for a great day out in the hill country, we'd invite you out. It's a magnificent cave. It looks quite different than other caves that you may have visited before. In the summertime, when it's hot outside, the cave is always about 68 degrees inside, so it's a great way to get out of the sun and cool off in the heat of the day. So, perfect destination year-round. Come and see us. We'd love to welcome people from all over the state to Longhorn Cavern State Park.